What's up everyone, this is Scott Mealy with Real Estate Photography Startup. In this video, I'm gonna share how I edit my aerial photos for real estate clients. If you missed my video on how I shoot aerial photos for a real estate listing, you can check it out on my YouTube channel. The video is called How to Shoot Drone Photos for Real Estate. So now that I've shot this property, I'm gonna walk you through my editing process for these aerial shots. Just to recap, I shot these photos with a Mavic 2 Pro and I used a SanDisk Ultra Class 10 micro SD card. If you're already familiar with how to transfer photos from an SD card to a hard drive, feel free to skip ahead to where I open up Adobe Lightroom. The first step to editing is to transfer the photos from the micro SD card to an external hard drive. Your micro SD card should have come with an SD card adapter. Most computers are going to have a slot to insert that adapter. I'm using an iMac, so when I insert the card, it shows up in my finder window. You'll also want to insert the hard drive using a USB cable. I'm using a My Passport external hard drive. Once again, I plug that in and it shows up in my finder window. I'll show you how I like to organize my files. There are several different ways to do this, but this is what's worked for me in keeping my clients and photos organized. So first I'll create a new folder with the client's company name. Then inside that folder, I'll create another folder and call it the name of the client. The reason I do this is because if you work with a company like Keller Williams, for example, you'll be working with several different agents, so you wanna keep those clients separated within the Keller Williams folder. Inside of that folder, I'll create another folder and use the address of the property for its name. Then within this folder, I'll create three different folders, stills, project, and edited. In another finder window, I'll select all the photos on my SD card by hitting Command A on my keyboard. I'll drag them to my newly created folder called Stills and drop them in. This is now transferring the photos from the SD card to the hard drive. Now I'm gonna open up Adobe Lightroom. We first need to create a catalog. To do this, go to File, New Catalog. Now we'll name the catalog and save it in the project folder that we created. Now that Lightroom is opened up, Click on Library, now click on this plus sign where it says Folder, and find the Stills folder where our photos are stored. Open that up and click Import. Now all our photos are here in Lightroom, so we can click on Develop to start editing. Here on the left side, you can see I've created some presets. Presets are settings that I've saved for a particular type of photo. So I have presets for aerial photos, exterior photos, and interior photos. The settings include things like exposure, color temperature, highlights, shadows, etc. Having these presets saves me a lot of time. Usually when I use a preset, it gets me about 80% of the way there, and then all I need to do is make some small adjustments. When I hover my mouse over this aerial preset, you can see that the photo changes. It's giving me a preview of what that preset looks like on this photo. If I were to click on that preset, the photo would take on those settings. But we're gonna edit this photo from scratch. The first thing I typically do when editing an aerial photo is bring the highlights all the way down and bring the shadows all the way up. Then I adjust the color temperature. I like to have my photos be on the cooler side or more blue. You can either use the slider or you can click on the number to the right of the slider and use your up down arrows on your keyboard to make slight adjustments. Next, I change the exposure. I like to have a nice bright image. I'll usually boost the saturation to make the colors pop a little bit. I also boost the dehaze to make the photo look clearer. Here I'm just fine tuning the exposure and that looks good to me. As I mentioned in my previous video, I shoot three bracketed shots in case I wanna use a more underexposed shot. So these other two photos I'll delete from Lightroom because this first photo seems to work just fine. One great feature that helps speed up my edits is copying and pasting settings to another photo. So I have this first photo selected, I'll hit Command C on my keyboard and it brings up the copy settings. I keep everything selected except transform, spot removal, and crop. Hit copy or enter on your keyboard, select the next photo and hit command V. So the settings from my first photo are now applied to this photo. Then I'll go through and make some minor adjustments like boosting the exposure. I have an aerial preset created, so let me show you how easy it is to apply that preset. I select the photo I wanna edit, come over to the left side under preset, 
and select Aerial. As I mentioned, this gets me about 80% of the way there. This looks a little green to me, so I'll adjust the tint to even out those colors. I'll also make a few more changes to temperature and exposure. Let me show you how to create a preset with the current settings we have. You just come here to the preset panel and click on this plus sign. Click Create Preset. Now you can choose which attributes you want to include in this preset. I select everything except Transform. Then name your preset. We'll just call this Preset Test, then click Create. Now you can see that the preset has been added to the list of user presets. So let's select another photo and click on our new preset. And that looks pretty darn good. Again, we'll select another photo and use our new preset. This, again, gets us pretty close. I'm noticing that the horizon looks a little slanted downward from right to left. This happens when the drone is maybe fighting the wind and the camera isn't perfectly straight. The way to fix that is in the transform panel. As I hover over these sliders, you can see grid lines will appear. I'll click on the rotate tool and use the up down arrows on my keyboard to adjust slightly. Make sure you have constrained crop selected or else the photo will not look right. Now let's look at a photo that's directed into the sun. These are difficult to work with, but I just do my best and move on. So I'll click on my preset that we just created. That looks pretty dark and too blue or cool in temperature. So I'll adjust the temperature to make it warmer and I'll boost the exposure. I'll adjust the temperature again and that looks pretty good. I used to spend way too long trying to perfect these photos, but now I get them to where they look good and I know the client will like them. Now I can copy these settings and paste them into this photo that looks similar. That's not too bad. Slight adjustment to exposure and temperature and that looks good. You can see how you could potentially get really quick at editing these types of photos. I'll show you just a few more edits. Here we can use our new preset, adjust exposure and temperature, but wait, what's this in the photo? Yep, sometimes I get caught on camera. Here's an easy way to remove yourself from the photo. On the top right, you'll see this circle with an arrow sticking out of it. This is the spot removal tool. Click on that and then paint yourself with that tool. You'll see that Lightroom chooses another part of the picture and basically clones that part that you painted. This works well with smaller objects like a basketball or a dog toy that was left in the yard. Okay, last one here. I'll select our preset, adjust the exposure, fix the horizon, and there you go. Now I'll show you how to export these photos. I'll hit Command Shift E on my keyboard and it will bring up the export dialog box. Click choose in order to select where you want those photos to be exported to. Find the folder that we created called edited and click choose or hit enter on your keyboard. Now name your files and make sure to select custom name dash sequence and start with the number one. If you're exporting all of your photos at once, this will give them the same name with a number at the end in sequential order. These file sizes are huge if you export them in their original format. Clients usually need smaller file sizes for their MLS systems. So I export in JPEG, bring the quality down to 80, and resize to 50%. These settings make the file sizes much more manageable. When you're done, click Export. Now you can go to your finder and see that your photo is there. Here's a look at the difference from the original photo to the edited photo. Hopefully this will help you in your own edits. Feel free to share this video with anyone who you might think would be interested and I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm putting together an online course that teaches how to start and grow your real estate photography business. You can be notified when the course is ready by signing up for our email list at rephotostartup.com. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and remember, keep shooting.